body is like a, um, a storehouse for every single emotion that we've ever experienced. And like you mentioned, it will, it, it, it will go away when it completes itself. Emotions needs to complete itself. Like, because we are in and out beings. We inhale, we inhale, we exhale. We drink water, we pee it out. We eat food, we crap it out. But when it comes to emotion, emotion comes up and then we just store it in the body by holding it and not allowing it to complete itself by experiencing the emotion fully. And one thing that I want to point to as well from what I was just sharing is that there's a difference between unconsciously experiencing an emotion through reaction and then consciously going into an emotion to allow itself to complete, to fully experience it. So when I'm feeling anger, there's going to be times for sure, because we are human, where we're going to unconsciously react to an event, right? And there's also a very beautiful practice when you consciously go into an emotion to allow itself to complete. So if you're feeling anger, you go in and you can throw a tantrum and you can allow yourself to be a victim. This is something that I did just recently to uh, share a personal story. So about two and a half weeks ago, um, I was sitting in my bed and I, I got a notification on my phone and I looked over to my phone and it was a message from my mom. And when I read the message, I just felt my heart sink. And it was a message saying something along the lines of, Hey Matt, um, just letting you know that my dog in, in Australia, her name's Zeno, um, Zeno is dying. She's getting old and she's dying and we don't know if there's anything that can save her and i'm sure for anyone who has ever had a pet or has a pet you know that um it, it's not like they're like family they are family they're part of the family and instantly i just felt this heaviness in my body because right now at the time of this recording i i'm not a late i'm not i can't fly to australia um because of Earth, because of lockdown so instantly I went into feeling trapped and feeling like I just wish reality was different to the way reality is right now. So what I did was after uh, replying back to her and, and so on, I consciously went into my victimhood. Like, am I allowed to swear on you, Kim? Go for it. <laughs> yeah. I was like, fuck this. I just want to be able to go. Like, this is fucking shit. I fucking hate the government. I'm, I just wish I could just be able to fly. This fucking coronavirus. I'm just so sick of this. But I was doing it with conscious intent to allow the emotion to complete itself. I wasn't going into everything is just perfect. Universe is working for me, not against me. I went, no, fuck this. This is absolute bullshit. Breathed, screamed into a pillow. Snot was coming out. Tears were coming out because I just couldn't go and hold my dog as she's dying. And from that, afterwards, I just felt this massive, this massive release. And I could have gone months or year or even never and just totally resisted the emotion that was showing up. But that's what I mean as going back to what we're doing as kids, like just releasing the emotion. But now it's just doing it with conscious intent. So I didn't even know what the question was, but hopefully that helped in some way. Oh, oh we're sending so much love and healing to Zena. Oh, Thank you. Yeah. Um, I can completely relate to that and one of my best friends Gina always reminds me of this because you know she also does the work and she's a self-love coach and sometimes she goes into this moments of like it's so annoying I'm so pissed off and because I'm a friend I'm like oh no but it's all going to be fine you know you know this you know it's all going to work out and then I catch myself and I'm like no she just wants me to be there with her for a minute. She wants to express her frustration and her feelings. And so it's been really good actually the past few weeks noticing myself being like, oh yeah, this is fucking shit. Oh God, it must feel so bad for you right now. Cause especially cause she's just got the coronavirus in England and she's just, mm -hmm. I'm just like, this is so shit. Like it's so, uh. and actually so much gets released from that place. So it's quite refreshing actually feeling it and speaking it because that is when you heal it mm -hmm. exactly and when when you arrive at the higher perspective such as everything is working out for me not to me it comes from a much more authentic place because it's coming from after the emotional charge has been released so then afterwards i was like okay i can be in acceptance with what is right now but from a place of 
complete congruity rather than everything is perfect and everything and being acceptance from it with it from a place of emotional charge versus no charge there anymore or a little charge there anymore. So I can see the high perspective, but after the emotion is being released. So yes. Yeah. Yeah. And I also see a lot of people like in this place of resentment and fear and knowing that they need to release it and let go of it, but on what is that about? Is that some kind of addiction to pain and victimhood? And if so, like, what advice would you give to those people? Yeah, well, for someone who may have resistance to any emotion, it could just be from, like I mentioned before, the three, the three types of conditioning. It could just be some type of blind spot that someone has around um, that they may not even know that the emotion is present, or they may not even aware that there's resistance to the emotion being present. So this is why I love shadow work, because it goes into becoming aware of the things that we're unaware of. So the very first thing is just looking at if there's even resistance to the emotion. If we feel like the emotion can't come up, there might be some type of subconscious belief about the emotion, or there might be some type of trauma. We might, we might be um, modeling something that happens when we, were, when we were children from how our parents dealt with that emotion. Or it just may not have any um, competence when it comes to having tools to, be able to deal with those emotions. Because I don't know about you, but I didn't get taught how to be with sadness. I didn't get taught how to be with jealousy and anger. So naturally people might deal with it in an unhealthy coping pattern because we didn't get taught. It's like when an emotion is comes up, this is how you be with it in a healthy and effective way. We didn't get taught this in school. So all of us are doing the best that we can from the level of awareness that we have, the tools that we have available to navigate throughout the situation and navigate through the emotion and our own backpack of trauma that we're carrying around. So a lot of it just comes down to maybe some type of blind spot or just not having the tools to be able to deal with it. And then once we know better, so just having the tools, then we can do better. Mm, I love that. Yeah. And if I can reflect back to when I didn't know how to handle emotions, it was in boys and being busy and shopping and partying and alcohol and all the things, anything to distract myself from really looking inwards. <laughs> and um and now it's a completely different story, you know, living in a conscious community where, you know, people want you to feel and express and you're held in that. And it's just so refreshing to, to, to have the confidence and permission to, yeah, just let whatever needs to come through to come through without any judgment. Yes. What, are, what about those people who are walking around holding on to the anger, holding on to the reset light and, and actually not letting it go? Mm -hmm. what, what, what was the question about those people so you know some people are just walking around like so angry and just well like you said I suppose it's not having the tools to be able to release it or maybe the desire to actually get out of the victimhood and it's been such an addictive pattern to be in this place of like blame and justifying and complaining that they actually you know don't know what it feels like to feel empowered and to feel feel like they're actually responsible yes so what i would say to to those people is um if you if you know that there's some anger that you're carrying around a very practical thing that you can do is um let me let me cover this from two different ends if you feel there's a resistance to being with the to being with the anger what i invite you to do is to sit with the resistance because for some people that i've worked with for example the significant emotional event has been from them experiencing some type of physical abuse growing up. So of course, they're gonna have resistance to anger if their relationship to anger was first created when they saw anger towards them through physical abuse. So of course, there's gonna be a resistance there because that thing that you saw in that parent or that uncle or that auntie or whoever that person was, and you found it very, very scary to be it put onto you, and you notice that the emotion is present within you, then of course it's gonna be scary, of course it's gonna be resistance. So before, before going into the anger, I can give someone a tool, but they may not be able to apply the tool if there's still that resistance there. So what you get to do is you get to sit with that resistance. And what I mean with sit with, to give you really, really practical, what I mean is to sit 
either get someone to support you through this, or if you want to do this yourself, you can sit in silence with your eyes closed and allow that emotion to come up. And that emotion may be sadness. That emotion may be a fuck you energy. That emotion may be uh, total resistance. So what you want to do is you want to be um, in non-resistance to the resistance, which sounds weird, but if there's a resistance in your body, you just sit with it and be like, there's a resistance here and just allow it to come up. And what I always say to my clients is as you fully allow the emotion to come up, it comes out. As it comes up, it's coming out. So that's what I would say to those people or get support. And the second pet person, if you feel like there is anger there and you feel like you need to release it, but just don't know how, a simple thing that I always come back to is either screaming into a pillow, tapping into that anger that's in my body and getting waiting until it's like a level nine or above. I might put music on and then I will scream into a pillow. I'll scream out loud or I'll beat the pillow. And if you go to my Instagram, if you go to my IGTV, one of the IGTV videos, I think it's like the third or fourth video, you'll see if, uh, a demonstration of me doing that. So that's, that's what I would say. Amazing. And you know what? I can remember one of the first videos I saw of you was when you were outside in the rain screaming. And I was like, who is this guy? Like, oh my gosh. That was so, so powerful for me That's to actually so see, to see you do, <laughs> to do that. Yeah, I do it regularly. I, 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 do, I do that practice regularly because it's not a one-time thing. It's a, because we're human, right? We feel anger. This, these emotions do come up. And it's not about never reacting. That's what a lot of people think. It's like, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do my trauma work. So I never react. It's not about never reacting. It's about minimizing the time between an unconscious reaction to a conscious response. So it's about shortening the gap. We're all going to react. We're human. We are going to react. It's just about how, how much can I shorten the time span between a conscious response to an unconscious reaction to I'm feeling reaction. Now let me use the tools that I've learned to be able to be with this unconscious reaction that's coming up, right? And when we really get that, it gives us so much freedom because it allows us to be like, oh, shit, I can react. I can, I can do those things. It's going to happen because we're human. And yeah, so I just wanted to add that in. Mm, yeah, full permission to be the full spectrum of, of human. Yes, <laughs> this is the thing, a great like, way to put it. When, yeah, when I started to do the work, I was like, oh my God, I, I, I've lost my vision and I don't feel good today. Oh my God, I can't possibly tell my Instagram followers that I'm human. I have to put on this front. And then I was like, screw that. Like the most authentic person I can be is showing every expression. And like you said, it's not how often you fall off. It's how quick you get back because we're yes. all growing, we're all, you know, raising our consciousness, especially during this crazy, crazy time. If no one has been in a down in the past 18 months, I would say, well, what are you not trying to feel? Because yeah. <laughs> it was going to bring up some shit. Or you know something that we don't, and I want to sign you up as my coach ASAP, because yes, we're human, especially during this time, as you mentioned, there's going to be some shit that comes up. I think that it's bringing up our um, our need to control because there's so much there's so much where there's so much stuff that's happening where we can't control things so it's being with oh wow I didn't know that I have this aspect of me that wants to control everything and so it's, it's bringing up a lot for a lot of people and um, yeah I love that. so in this world where we can't control anything all we can really control is our willingness to be with ourselves to love ourselves and to be willing to release emotions and feel everything yes but i come back to what you just shared i think that it's so important to, for everybody to really get that so there's only one thing that we can control we can't control the external world life is just going to happen but the thing that we can control is we can control the meaning of what's happening that's the one thing that we can control because we, we can't even control our emotions. We can regulate our emotions, but we can't control our emotions, which is very different. Because if someone comes ahead and slaps me in the face right now, I'm just going to react. It's just going to happen. My body is going to do its thing. There's going to be emotion that comes up. I cannot control it. But what I can regulate, to regulate, what I can do is I can regulate when I notice my, myself do get angry or whatever the emotion that will come up is I can 
transform the emotion, alchemize the emotion, transform it into something different, like tranquility or coming back into feeling calm. And when we get that, it's like, there's so much freedom in that. It's like, I can't control what's happening. I can do my best to make an impact on how I want the world to be, but I can't control it. But what I can control is my meaning, my internal world of what's happening. And there's so much power in that because then we can relate that back into past events that's happened where it has been traumatic, where we've gone through a breakup, or maybe someone's being cheated on, or maybe something happened and we created a meaning about my, ourselves that we're worthless or we're unlovable. But then we get to take full responsibilities. Like I created that meaning, right? I was the one that did that. I couldn't, I didn't, I can't control what happened because what happens happens. But what I can take back and what I can uh, take responsibility for is the meaning that I put on myself or the meaning that I created about relationships or the meaning that I created about men or the meaning that I created about marriage or whatever it might be. And there's so much power in when we get that realization that we can control our internal reality. Not our emotions, we can't even control our thoughts. If I say to someone, don't think of the color blue, don't think of the color blue, they're gonna think of the color blue, right? <laughs> but we can control the meaning and that's what really matters. And so how does all of this like impact relationships? Because I mean, my listeners will know that, you know, I talk about relationships and finding my person all of the time. And yeah, how does all of this really help people to attract their, their dream partner? Well, I think that what I just mentioned before, I think that it helps in so many ways because if someone's single, what everybody is doing, whether they realize it or not, they have a backpack. They're wearing this backpack. And in this backpack is trauma. In this backpack is our identity, our self-concept. In this backpack is meanings that we've created about men, relationships, women, sex, uh, our body parts, certain body parts. So how this, how this is in relation to it all is everything. Because if we want a relationship with another, we must look at a relationship with all of us. And when I mean all of us, I mean the emotions, our past history, the meanings that we've created about men, women, sex, so pleasure, all of it, right? And coming back to what I mentioned at the start, the relationship with ourselves affects every other relationship in our life. When I started to take notice of the way that I was showing up in, in my, on my own self-concept, and things that have happened in the past and allowed those things that in the past that I was holding onto to complete itself, I created space for healthier relationships to come to me and for me to show up healthier in relationships. So it's a journey. And at the same time, it's, 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 it's very practical when you think of it like that as well, you know, starting off with what do I, even just little questions like this, what do I think about or fill in, fill in the gap, right? This is for everybody listening. If you just get a pen and paper right now or just think about this within, this is a very simple way that you can start to, um, to first change your relationship with yourself. You must first understand your current relationship with yourself. So starting off with something as simple as our belief systems about, let's say, sex. So something that I do with my clients is I get them to say the very first thing that, come, that comes up to say it out loud. So I will say something along the lines of, Fill in the gap. Sex is what? And for some people, when I'm doing this on a group call, they might be sex is amazing. Sex is disgusting. Sex is shameful. And all these different answers come up, right? Or I might say men are what? And then that one's always interesting. Men are pigs. Men are amazing. Men are safe. Men are unsafe. Men are, and just the list goes on. And what they're doing is they're becoming aware of what is their current relationship with relationships. And I just go on around. I do the same thing with marriage and um, sex and their cock or their pussy. And all of these different things will come up. My cock is what for the men? Uh, this and shameful and uh, I don't have a relationship. And it just keeps going on. Same thing with their pussy. My pussy is what? Ugly, nice, amazing. And they just take notice of what comes up for them. And there's so much power in that because all of those belief systems, whether you know it or not, or not, is affecting the way that you show up with other people. It's affecting the way that you show up in relation in, in sex, for example. If they have if they have these um, subconscious beliefs that are ineffective to creating a healthy relationship, 
that's going to affect the way that you show up. Or it's going to affect the way that you're perceiving relationships or, or the person that you're dating, right? Because our belief systems do distort our perception of reality to conform to what it is that we believe.